still $22. That's not an inconsiderable sum of money. I don't think that many people need to buy this. Okay, you'll see what I'm talking about soon. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. And today I have a new eyeshadow palette. I'm picking this up like L from Death Note. I don't know why I just thought of that, but I have the Luster Charm eyeshadow palette from Alter Ego. Now the front only says Luster, but the back confirms that it is the Luster Charm eyeshadow palette. So this just came out today, or to timelines. This just came out today, the day I'm filming this, but yesterday, the day you're watching this probably, it's a 10 pan palette. It's the shade for shade dupe of the Pat McGrath Mothership 7 Divine Rose eyeshadow palette. And I just wanted to share with y'all like some objective visual information as well as some of my descriptive words and the texture and that kind of thing to help y'all in your decision of whether or not you think you're gonna buy this. Now, I did receive this in PR. Anytime I review any makeup product, it is never my goal to tell you whether I think it's worth it because that is a different meaning for every single person out there. 10 different people will have 10 different meanings of worth it to them. And also, especially if I get something in PR that's just not fair to anyone now, is it? So instead of evaluating whether I think it's like worth it, I'm gonna show y'all some live swatches of these. I also did do full arm swatches that I'll go ahead and show now. Here are all 10 shades of the Ultra Ego Luster Charm eyeshadow palette. And this palette, you can even tell from the swatches, it's very, very soft. Soft as in like a uh, subtle kind of satin. Of course, there's one shade in here that is hyper glittery and reflective and just a big showstopper. So I will talk about all of these shades soon, but here are the all together swatches so you can see at least what it looks like. Next, I'll do some live swatches of each of these shades on my palm. And then after I go through live swatches, I'm gonna give you all some swatch comparisons between the Huda Beauty Nude Light Obsessions palette also the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palette and the Alter Ego Daydream palette. I will do a fourth comparison, not with the palette, but between this hyper glittery shade right here to ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in Ritz because I know many of y'all would like to see that comparison too. So let's get into it. I am drinking some tea today. I have this uh, rose apricot oolong tea and look at the packaging of this thing. It's from my March Sip Spy box. I like to think that these bees are like pollinating the flowers on my little teapot here. All right, let's get into those live swatches. Ooh, before the live swatches, um, let me just say a little sneak peek into my final like evaluation of this palette. I don't think that many people need to buy this. Okay, you'll see what I'm talking about soon. I'm gonna swatch four shades and then three and three. So that's how we'll go about it. The shades we have are crystal, which is kind of like a uh, pearly to a little bit pink of a duochrome. Then next we have Spectral, which is a kind of satin, light, light champagne highlighting color. Next we have Opaque, described as a ruby wine sparkle. Again, not hyper metallic, but has more of that satin finish. I really like this tone, this kind of brick red. That's my favorite kind of thing. And then next we have Sacred, which is a metallic sandy dune as it is described on the website. And this one is the standout shade. So just, it's no comparison. This one is so much brighter and shinier than any of the other three. These three have a very soft finish and all of these have their like place. Like these, this kind of formula can do something entirely different than this kind of formula can do. But uh, I feel like most of us watching this video are not really looking for a palette of like really satin eyeshadows because we probably have that already. So let's just take one last look at these four shadows before I move on to the next three. Beautiful. I gotta say this first shadow, Crystal, is not my favorite <laughs> just because usually in an eye look, I don't have a place for this kind of shade, whereas I clearly have a, a place for a brick red, a, a light satin champagne, and like a topper color. I am actually wearing this on my lid if you can see, yes, it is all I'm wearing as that shiny lid shade. And I like it, I really do like it. <laughs> but later on, I am doing a comparison of that shade with ColourPop Ritz. Just y'all wait. All right, the next three shades are Infinite, which is a sparkling earth brown. I love these kinds of shades. I especially like satin shades that are this tone of brown because this is such an easy single shadow look. 
Next I have the shade Radiant, which is a sparkling rose duochrome. I would describe this more as like orange than I would describe it rose, but the official description is rose. Mm -hmm. And next we have Mystic, which is a matte cherry blossom. I, again, would not really agree with this description. I would describe it more as like a, a lavender than a cherry blossom. But anyways, there is Infinite, Radiant, and Mystic. I am using Mystic as my transition shade in my um, three shadow look today. Let me just go ahead and move on to swatching the last three shades and then the swatch comparisons and then we can go into my thoughts on this palette. The last three shades we have are Spell, a sparkled sandy gold, and this is one of those baked formulas. Really gorgeous. Nice reflective sheen to it. Very smooth. Nice, nice. Next we have Magnific, which is a metallic brown with flecks of silver. Wow, very cool toned, really murky. Ooh, I love this kind of shade. And then lastly, we have Rare, which is a pretty standard like warm tone matte brown. It's described as a matte cinnamon brown on the website. Yeah, so there are the last three. So my favorite out of these three is actually probably Magnific. That kind of, look at that tone. That's pretty unique, right? It actually kind of reminds me of uh, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Jackie Ina palette lituation, this kind of purpley silver, purpley silver brown, yeah. So those are the final three shades. Now, I will admit that swatching just individually in really good lighting on the curve of a palm is gonna make most eyeshadows look pretty good, right? So let's look at some swatch comparisons because this color story is not, <laughs> I was gonna say unique. Obviously it's not unique because it's a dupe palette, but it's not uncommon is what I'm gonna say. If you have a moderately sized makeup collection, you probably, don't need this. And I'll elaborate more on that after the comparison swatches. So first let's look at the swatches between the Luster Charm palette on top and then on the bottom I have eight roughly comparable, like loosely comparable shades from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam eyeshadow palette. So among my swatch comparisons, the Luster Charm palette and the Soft Glam palette have the most overlap, which I'm not surprised by, right? These are both like very soft, pretty, neutral palettes. Personally, because I already have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam, if I were a consumer trying to decide to purchase and I saw these comparison swatches, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> because also like the shimmers in the Anastasia palettes are a lot like shinier, except for this like one off sacred shade, which is very, very glittery. But again, um, let me just go ahead and show you now the comparison between the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Ritz and this Luster Charm palette shade Sacred, which is really the only standout shade for me in this palette. The rest of the shades in the Luster palette are like nice, you know, but they're very uh, replicable. Again, I'm trying to think from y'all's perspective as a consumer because I too am a consumer. But if I could get something better for cheaper, then you know, I'm gonna recommend that to y'all. Because honestly, the swatch of the Super Shock looks better if you are considering buying this palette for just that one shade. I would say don't do it. Next I have swatch comparisons between the Luster palette and my Huda Nude Obsessions Light. There wasn't a ton of overlap between the Huda Nude Light and the Luster Charm, but uh, the overlap was between the two matte shadows in the Luster Charm, as well as one of the shimmers. I also was reminded of my Alter Ego Daydream palette when I was opening up the Luster just because of the kind of soft purple rosy tones. So I did comparisons. There are a few, but again, not as many as with like the Soft Glam, for example. Now let's talk about like my opinion on this palette. This palette is $22. And I know that a lot of people are gonna say, well, that's better than $125 for like Pat McGrath. This is not the Divine Rose one, I have the Divine Rose too, but I'm just holding it up for like the sake of packaging. So people are gonna say like, oh, well, it's not 125, it's 22. It's still $22. That's not an inconsiderable sum of money. And I was waiting for this palette to go on sale on the website so I could see the price before I film this video so I can kind of gather my, um, my opinion around that. And it was more than I expected it to be. I know that there are, you know, different formulas in this palette, so it's not like you're just investing in a matte and a shimmer formula because these four, Crystal, Radiant, Sacred, and Spell are the dupes, or the baked shadows for 
the special shades in the Pat McGrath. $22. That is actually the same price as the Alter Ego Artemis palette, and I rearranged mine um, to be more aesthetically pre pleasing, but this palette works amazingly, and I love it. You can tell by how much use I have in this palette, right? And this is the same price. So if I were just shopping on the Alter Ego site, I would pick a palette like this, like in a heartbeat over a palette like this, in terms of like value and number of shades and that kind of thing. I know that the like pans in the Luster palette are much larger, but at this point, who is using up an entire pan of eyeshadow anyways? So uh, I would rather have like smaller pans, a smaller palette for less cost. Um, I don't know, it's just my thoughts on that because 22 is the uh, so far existing most expensive price for a palette. I also have the, sorry, I don't have it in front of me, but the Canyon and the Blooms palettes are 15 pan palettes and those are $16 each. So I was actually expecting this to be like maybe, maybe $18 uh, based on the pricing of the other palettes. Again, I know that, you know, finicking over maybe $4 difference is not a big deal comparing $125 to like $22 or $18, but it matters to me and I think it might matter to some of y'all too. Another thing, I didn't do direct comparisons with the Divine Rose palette because I don't own that one, but Jen Phelps did an excellent Instagram post comparing the Luster Charm to the original Pat McGrath palette and I'll go ahead and throw up that picture here and also link it down in my description box of course. Just look at these swatches. They're not identical. So if you are looking for something that is identical to the Pat McGrath Divine Rose palette, I also don't think that this is gonna give that to you. Now, I did use it for my eye look today and I love the look. I think I look gorgeous if I do say so myself, but um, if I was thinking with my own money would I buy this, probably not. If I, knowing what I know now, was talking to another version of me that didn't have this palette but was thinking about buying it, I would tell myself, to not spend the $22 on this because I already have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam. I already have the ColourPop Ritz, which works incredibly and gives much of the same effect. Um, I also actually have like a Pat McGrath palette with a hyper sparkly astral shade in it too. Granted, this one is a little bit more uh, champagne and a little deeper than the shade in the Divine Rose one and the Luster Charm palette, but uh, on the eyes, it'll look the same. And I always say all this with a big butt. If you don't have ColourPop Ritz, if you don't have Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam, if you don't have another Pat McGrath palette, this I think is a fine palette. It's gonna be cheaper to buy this than it will be to buy like a Nabla palette, Anastasia Beverly Hills, a real Pat McGrath astral shade, the ColourPop Super Shock, right? So if you're trying to gather all these other things to mimic this palette, I mean, that's obviously not gonna be worth it. Uh, so if you have like a smaller eyeshadow palette collection, you don't have shades like this already, then sure. I think it's a nice palette. It has a very pretty, pretty effect. And I hope that I'm modeling that in my eye look today. If you think my eye look is pretty, it is using only these three shades from this palette. And you also saw my reactions to like these two shades here. They're gorgeous. They're really pretty. Yeah, that's everything I have to say about this palette. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was helpful to you because I make these videos to be helpful. And if it was, let me know in the comments because that just makes my heart sing. Also, I am so sorry if I've been talking very fast. It's been a little bit since I filmed a video. <laughs> and usually when I talk to like people who are not doctors, I need to remind myself to slow down because I'm so used to like speaking at the maximum <laughs> rate words per minute. So again, apologize about that. I wasn't really thinking about it because I was thinking about everything else I was supposed to say about this. With all that being said, I hope y'all have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for spending your precious time with me. Remember that y'all are my treasure. Find the beauty in every day, but most importantly, be kind to yourselves. I will see you in my next video. Bye.